Within the confines of Skyrim exist many different ways to attack enemies. Lay traps, get up close and personal with an axe, maybe summon a temporary friend to do the fighting for you. But there's one method of attack that isn't used quite as frequently as the others. Can you beat Skyrim by only using scrolls? If you've seen my videos, you know that I don't make exaggerations, which is why you can trust me when I say that the Fork Barbarian plushie made by Makeship is the greatest plushie in the known universe. No matter what you ask of it, the Fork Barbarian is up to the task. It can defend your most prized possessions, protect you from monsters as you sleep, help you pack on muscle mass, keep you company while you wait for the holidays, calm you down as you lose it all because you bet on the lions, take in a beautiful piece of art, talk you out of having another drink, and much, much more. But you've gotta act fast. The plushie is only available for three weeks. If you don't order yours by October 5th for the incredible price of $24.99, your life will never be all that it could have been. Because I've done so many of these Skyrim challenges by now, and because I almost never make mistakes in my playthroughs, I went with an orc as my race. My gut told me, that the damage inflicted on enemies from the scrolls would not be impacted by the level of whatever skill would be associated with the effect of that scroll. Is that the truth? Maybe. But I don't care, because it doesn't matter. I named myself Paperboy, parkoured over Alduin's head, made a beeline for the safety of a building, didn't attack anything in there, I don't make the same mistake twice unless I'm drinking or not paying attention, and exited out into the world of Skyrim, ready for the real game to begin. Now, like most of you at this point into the video, I was wondering how this was going to work. I had a vague idea of what I was going to do, but it wasn't going to be easy, or fun, or family friendly. This is an elaborate and multifaceted plan that will be a tremendous pain in the ass to make work. The first piece of the puzzle was caps. Scrolls can be found out and about roaming the countryside, but they're rare. You don't want a rare scroll, you want medium rare, and that's not something you're gonna find in a wild scroll. To ensure I was able to obtain a scroll, I settled on buying one. I stopped by the golden bucket shop to sell the items I'd picked up in my travels thus far, and briefly attempted to glitch myself through this wall to reach the hidden chest lurking just above the void. I watched a video that showed how to do it. You need a weird magical box that you're not supposed to be able to obtain that, when dropped, floats wherever you dropped it, almost like a Minecraft block. Because I didn't have that, I failed, left, and made my way to Whiterun Stables to travel to Solitude. Solitude was not where I meant to go, so I got back on the carriage and rode to Dawnstar. You know what I'm doing here, at least you think you do. You thought, like I did, that I'd be doing the exploit with that traitor. Well, you can't f***ing do that if she's not there. However, you can still access the chest to take whatever you want. A small part of me hoped that a scroll would be in there. There was no scroll, of course, why would there be? But I did snag as much as my body could stuff inside it. I momentarily considered abandoning this idea to do a wooden sword playthrough, realized that I had to see this through, and waited inside a shop in Dawnstar for a few days, hoping that the cat merchant would arrive. She never did. I couldn't tell you why. I assumed it was because I wasn't far enough into the game yet. So I entered Whiterun, sold the weapons I'd stolen to Mrs. Potato, had about 2200 gold, told the Jarl about the dragon, got instructed by the court jester to track down the rock for him to color on, and bought myself my first scroll. The Scroll of Firestorm, that does 75 damage in a huge radius all around you. I was off to a promising start. It only took me 45 minutes to get one scroll. At this rate, I could have enough scrolls to beat Skyrim by the time Elder Scrolls 6 came out. But I already had what I needed to break Skyrim, even if I didn't know it yet. A scroll is a one-time use weapon. However, to make the Dawn Star Chest exploit work, you only need to use it once. You quick save, attack the merchant with the scroll, reload the save, her inventory resets, and you've still got your scroll. That's how you get an absurd amount of gold or soul gems or items to disenchant or whatever you want that's in that chest. I won't bore you with the details. I was only doing this for the gold, not to enchant anything like in the telekinesis video. I ran the gauntlet of attacking her, stealing her items, and selling them back to her until I had me about 15,000 gold, which, if you paid attention earlier, is enough for about 12 scrolls. Now the question is, where do you get 12 scrolls? Easy. That quick save merchant reset thing I mentioned earlier applies to any vendor. Farangar had the first scroll, so I used it on him until I got as many fire scrolls as I could afford. 
but what am I going to do with these 12 scrolls? Is this a practice run for the Skyrim without attacking anything playthrough, where maybe I'll only use scrolls to attack something when I absolutely have to? Oh no, 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 you idiot, no. I got this many scrolls for a very specific reason. You see, there is a way to get an infinite number of scrolls. Theoretically speaking, at least. I'm not going to tell you what that method is just yet. You haven't earned it by suffering along with me yet. With my scrolls, I returned to the stagecoach driver and had him drop me off at Riften, as it's the closest he could get me to where I needed to go. Where was I going? Good question. It was one I asked myself many times as I searched for it. The location is referred to as Dayspring Canyon, but that name is a f***ing piece of garbage name. Unless you have the exact location marked on your map, you ain't gonna find it. Hell, I had it marked on my map, and I still couldn't find it. I got so hopelessly lost that I had to reload a save from a different character that had the Dawn Guard quest active so I could follow the marker and see where I was supposed to go. Turns out that, at night, it's really easy to find because the entrance f***ing glows in the dark. My brother got glow stick c*** in his eye when we were kids. I'll blame him for this. With the entrance to Dayspring Canyon found, I could arrive at Fort Dawnguard, speak to Isran about the vampire menace, and get sent off on my first mission. There's evil lurking inside a cave, and it's up to me to see what's going on. It's actually a really unique concept for a quest that you don't get anywhere else in the game. That was sarcasm. The dungeon was across the entire goddamn world, of course, but I still got there in one glued back together piece. Inside Dim Hollow Crypt is where sh got crazy, crazy bad. Allow me to remind you that I'm level 4 and have a very limited supply of attacks at my disposal. It's actually just one attack. It's a good one, but it's still one. This scroll in particular is powerful as all hell, assuming there's nobody hiding behind a rock or something. A bit deeper into the Minecraft was where the real trouble began. A lot of vampires, a lot of demon dogs, a lot of skeletons. The vampires drain your health and slow you down. The dogs rip gigantic chunks of flesh off you with every bite and will get in your f***ing way by blocking a path while they eat you. My magic also isn't high enough that I would be able to hold healing spells as I'm attacked. A smart man would have used the Dawn Star Chest exploit to load himself up with a bunch of different healing potions, but I, tragically, didn't do that. Brute force and punting the difficulty down to novice was the only way I got to the main chamber. Even then, you're not guaranteed victory against a crowd of people just because you've got a few scrolls. A heavy attack or a bash will cancel your attack. The safest way to go about this is to run away, ready the scroll, then unleash it when everyone runs towards you. I took out a good number of vampires before deciding that retreating was the better way to go. They forgot that I existed and buggered off. I solved the puzzle and rescued the princess. She's the key to this entire thing. One of them anyway. She told me where her family lived. I ignored the gargoyles and risen undead awakening in the crypts of the vampire lair until I reached the surface, made my way to the castle, and met Serata's father, Hargon. He offered me a choice, become a vampire or don't. I don't want to get political, but that's one of the questions every American is going to have to ask themselves one day. Make the right call. I chose to become a vampire because I kinda had to for this whole thing to work. Steps 1 and 2 were now complete. I had a scroll and I could transform into a vampire. Step 3 was the easy one. For that, I had to follow the main questline for a bit. That involved going to Bleak Falls Barrow to rescue the Dragonstone. I only needed one scroll after all this was said and done, so I could be a bit more nonchalant with how I used them. The Overlord managed to die in a single blast, after he interrupted me a few times first, but I had the Dragonstone. I returned it to the Accountant, and had to deal with the Dragon. Oh yeah, I also have all the unpleasant side effects of being a vampire, such as my health and stamina being 30% lower in the sun, and not being able to regenerate either when in the sun. The latter was a real pain in the ass throughout this entire run, health specifically. You'll see why in a minute. The dragon was tougher than I thought, but he is, after all, still the first dragon you fight. There are others helping you, so even in a nightmare scenario such as this, it's not gonna be that bad. The Jarl awarded me with a donkey, and at long last, all the players have been assembled. It's finally time to break Skyrim. Ignoring the two and a half hours it took to set this up, actually performing the glitch is stupid easy. Here's how it works. You equip whatever scroll you want to use. With it equipped, you transform into a vampire. Then, you revert back to your human form. Don't bring up your hands. Just immediately give every scroll you have to your companion. Then you bring up your hands. You'll notice that, 
Despite having no scrolls in your inventory, the scroll is still active in your hands. Congratulations, you now have infinite uses of that scroll. You can use it as much as you want and it'll never run out. The only problem is that because you have no scrolls in your inventory, if you equip something, you'll have to do that little process of transforming and giving your scrolls to your companion again if you want infinite scrolls again. That hindrance is made more significant for me due to the fact that I'm a vampire. My health doesn't regenerate in the sun, so if I'm hurt, I can't just use the healing spell to patch myself up. But that's okay, because now the real game begins. And of course by real game I mean the rest of Skyrim, the main questline and whatnot. One of the cool things about this method of attack is that you'll sometimes get a sweet third person shot of you helping people with their Pompeii Aftermath cosplay. Another issue, as you've no doubt seen, is that actually using the scroll leaves you open to attacks. If you want a good example of just how absurd this is, should you be able to use your scroll, look no further than this. A troll was melted to death from like 8 miles away. I met the Greybeards, screamed at their summoned comrades, and was sent to find Master Bori's long lost whistle. Before that though, I returned to Dawnstar to get myself some potions. I can't use healing spells, but I sure as can use potions to heal myself. That was the plan, anyway. The c was nowhere to be found, so I had to actually interact with someone to acquire my wares. That's if I wanted any though. I figured I could get through Ustengrav without them, so I left, killed the bandits guarding the crypt in a blinding display of fiery brilliance, did the same thing to the bandits inside, then to the Draugr as well, got myself the Become Earl Shout, and encountered an insurmountable problem, webbing. Believe it or not, the Fire Scroll does not burn the webbing. The only way for me to proceed was to unequip the scroll and use something to tear the spider home apart. But that's no good. I will be left defenseless against whatever dark forces await deeper in the crypt. Yeah, no. All that's left down there is the note Isle Delfino left for me. Before heading to Riverwood, I returned to Dawnstar once more to find a new scroll. I really wanted more potions to ensure my survival down the line, but my scroll was still in the shop. Luckily, the Mayhem scroll antagonizes all of those within a 6 block radius, making it the perfect tool to use on the merchants to utilize the chest exploit again. I did it until I had 45 minor healing potions. then traveled to Riverwood to meet Delphine. 45 of those potions might not seem like a lot because they only heal 25 health each, but keep in mind, I'm still level 4. Each potion restores a quarter of my health. From there, Delphine and I went to find a dragon to adopt. His name was Solokner. I loved him with such intensity that he couldn't handle it. His soul melted away from his body, leaving his skin completely intact, making it the perfect display piece to sit next to my sealed copy of Elmo's letter- oh. Alright then, I returned the golden claw to the salesman, got paid, took the claw upstairs for some alone time, stuck it back where it belonged, and traveled to Solitude to give all my earthly treasures to Malborn in preparation for my Thalmor infiltration mission. I just gave him armor, potions, and lockpicks. After stealing all the vegetables from the cookery slave cat, the real game began. It was not that bad, the first few guys went down in one explosion. Even the wizard, with his static electricity, only took one scroll to fall. Outside was harder. I was weak enough, as I've been all along, that a single swing from a make-believe sword killed me when I had about 30% health left. A convenient thing about using scrolls is that you could hold the attack and wait for someone to get close to you before you unleash it. Inside the Hoover Dam offices, the heavy attacks interrupting my discharge really pissed me in, almost as much as these two inbred wizard f not wanting to walk towards me to die. You know why they didn't? Two reasons. First, this one isn't even a wizard. It was a thunder boulder come to life. And the second reason is that the real wizard wasn't on this floor. He dropped a Contra Flame Atronach scroll that I really considered using. It would be interesting to have an effectively infinite army of Atronachs at your disposal. Spoiler alert, I never used it. The torture chamber went rather swimmingly. I nearly got my ass torn in two by a troll. Then I died as the sun kissed my skin. Being a vampire who hasn't consumed any blood, ever, is as dangerous to your health as it is to everyone else's. After speaking to the basement again, I entered the ratway beneath Riften to find Mesburn. I killed everything. Found Esburn, and we escaped. Not much to say really. Alduin's wall was next. I attempted to fight a dragon but quickly discovered it was more than a match for me. I let it off with a warning and ran away. If I saw it again, it wouldn't get off so easy. Inside the temple entrance area, Esburn's stupid f***ing flaming fire c didn't know her place and killed me. I mean, yeah, I might have accidentally given her husband 4th degree burns all over his body, but that's no cause for violence. 
This fireball got me pretty good too. In the Skyhaven Temple Sanctuary proper, I upped my armor to Blade's armor, learned me a history lesson, got welcomed into the Greybeard Special After School Club, spoke to him about Parthenax, killed some ice with the power of fire, met the big bad dragon man, failed the challenge by spitting fire, and was off to find the father of all scrolls. My first and only stop in the journey towards the most mature scroll in this continent was in the old igloo in the sea, the only mortal with more interdimensional awareness than the son of a shepherd. At Athland, I tried in vain to use a wooden plate to glitch myself through this wall and get to the inside of the Elder Scroll main chamber through its fanny rather than going through the front entrance. Didn't work. Could have been the wrong plate. Could have been me not knowing what I was doing. Nobody could say for sure. Surprisingly, I only had a few unpleasant encounters down in that frozen Dwemer hell. The first was when the pussy bandit refused to be set aflame by my magical might. The second was when I realized how incredibly outmatched I was by the sentient marble. The third was that same issue but with Falmer instead of marbles. I solved the puzzle, got the scroll, read it at the wrinkle in time, learned the word, and battled Alduin for the first time. I fully expected this to not go the way that it did. I thought the little lizard would be a pushover. He was not. After I died, I set the difficulty down to novice and still got f***ing destroyed in seconds. You know what the problem is, right? It's daytime, and I have not feasted on any corpses in many a week, which means my health is 30% lower and does not regenerate. My only choice was to go back in time, wait until darkness loomed over the mountain, and taunt the dragon again. The odds were in my favor, but it still required more effort than thought than this fight normally would. Alduin's attacks will frequently interrupt your attempts to summon a ring of fire, and his attacks are as potent as ever. It took a combination of healing potions and the become Ethel Shout to best the dragon. From there, a lot of boring shit happened. Spoke to the Greybeards about the Peace Council, then Ulfric, then the General, did the Khajiit Merchant exploit a few more times for extra potions, got my big meaty claws on enough vegetables to make a few portions of vegetable soup, returned to High Hrothgar, sat through the most monotonous conversation of all time, besides the ones I have with myself, trapped the dragon, and flew to Skaldavin. As I usually do, I ignored just about everything on my way to the temple. I might be powerful as all heck, but multiple dragons are still too much to handle. The Draugr inside though, not so much. The combination of the Ethereal Shout and the Fire Blast Scroll is wonderful. Makes taking out large groups of probably undead a cakewalk. Then, I came face to face with an old foe, the spider web. My first thought was to try to brute force my way through the impenetrable sticky mesh by using a plate to glitch through it. Spent about three seconds on that before I realized how futile it truly was. Pulling out a sword to cut the web wasn't an option. I had no scrolls and would be left defenseless against Alduin, and that's a challenge for another time. This required some thought. What I had to do was reload a save, keep as many Draugr alive as I possibly could, and lure them all towards the spider trap. The spiders could die, they were irrelevant to my situation, but it turns out that getting the Draugr through this walkway is not easy. My guess is that there's some sort of an invisible barrier that makes it difficult for them. In the end, after several minutes, I managed to get them to cut the webbing enough that I was able to slip through and navigate my way through the remainder of the temple until I emerged out into the Elder Scroll V for the second time. I really wanted to kill this guy. It would have been fun to wear his face as I tormented and burned all his friends to death. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Between Nokrin, his boulder bodyguard, and all the dragons, I didn't have the wherewithal to end him. But it didn't matter, because I finally arrived in Sovngarde, ready to face the Great Titan. Great Titan, my ass. The bitch went down in one blast. Then, at long last, it was time for the final battle arrived. I was pretty proud of Alduin. He did a lot of growing up since the last time I kicked his ass. My technique was largely the same as it was the first time, just with more time and energy required to make it work. That isn't to say that I didn't die, because I did. I chugged somewhere around 35 potions of health healing over the course of this epic 7 minute fight. Alduin, unable or unwilling to take pride in being beaten in a fight, shriveled away until all that remained was enough dust to give a fully grown elephant an asthma attack. I was sent back to the real world, and I did not beat Skyrim by only using scrolls. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Don't forget to buy the plushie through the link in the video description. While you're there, you can join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link also in the video description. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.